It's one thing to have a great content strategy and plan in place, quite another to actually show up and deliver on it daily, especially when you're working alone. So in this video, we're going to walk through a content creation workflow and system along with me giving my top five tips for how to publish more content. Stick around. To kick things off, tip number one is to organize your content creation efforts into a few distinct views. Now, this video is part of a series covering the content OS. And in this video, we're going to be covering this area, actions and creation, and the various pages and views within it. So what do we mean by organizing our efforts into some distinct views? Here, this is broken down by the types of media that we are going to be creating content for along with some key actions, any assets that we've already created that we want to access quickly and some key workflows. So let's take a look at the videos canvas as a starting point. It's linked to a master database, which we will talk about in a moment. And it is listed by status in the top groupings and then by dates or uh, periods in the rows category. So, Let's say that I had a new idea for a video. Since we're in the videos section, I can take a look at what's going on already. I can see which are being written, which scripts are kind of getting sketched out. Something is being filmed currently, something, an idea for another video later on. If I have another idea, I can, or I can also add it from this brainstorming section. So let's say that I had an idea for a website, uh, a web design video. Let's say life of a web designer. And if I give this a date, a due date, just to kind of roughly say, you know, somewhere in the future, I'd like to get this done. If I return back to my videos view, what I'm going to see is only things that are related to, a, to my video content creation efforts. And it's automatically going to be added to the idea stage. So when we talk about organizing our content efforts into a few different views. I personally do it by the type of media that is being created because let's say I'm, I'm thinking about, I want to kind of spend some time thinking about emails. And so I need to get into email mode. I need to take a look at what's, what's only going on in my email marketing efforts. And I can get a clear view without being overwhelmed, perhaps if I go to the full content master database, which is also part of this system, you can see it's a little bit messy. And so uh, in my experience, when you have um, a lot of ideas and a lot of things that you're trying to juggle, simply breaking down your content creation efforts into a few clear views, you can see this articles dashboard or canvas is very clean because there's only one thing going on. And that's the only thing I need to see right now. For videos, there's a little bit more going on. There are some, some different periods that are relevant. And so I can kind of think clearly about my video creation efforts. Tip number two is to be clear about the properties you want to track in your content. So it's tempting, especially if you have used Notion before to give every piece of content, every project, a hundred different properties and tags and categories. If you can clean that up to the, to the most important tags or properties for a specific piece of content that can also help you, you know, avoid being overwhelmed by every time you create a new content needing to fill out a hundred different properties and also just helps you think more clearly about what are the key factors and properties that are kind of guiding my content creation efforts. So let's take the emails as an example. If I wanted to add a new email to this campaign, the email canvas is set up by default to have the status in the groupings and the campaign that it belongs to in the rows. So let's say I wanted to add a new idea for an email. Let's say the email was a, I don't know, a 50% off for Black Friday sale. So I have an idea for this because it's already in this view. And because there are only a limited number of properties that I need to fill out, 
I can add that idea. Black Friday means I probably need to do that soon. And I can very quickly fill out just a few key properties about my, um, my new email idea. Some of these properties aren't relevant. Some of them aren't created yet. So I can add them directly from this list. But tip number two is simply when you are trying to create some properties, some global properties for your content creation efforts, keep it as simple as you can. Tip number three is to set some clear actions to hold ourselves accountable, especially once again, if we are working solo. So how do we do that? We have our different content views, which we've discussed. We have a list of things that are, that we'd like to create in different areas. Now it's time to set some clear actions to ensure that these things actually get done. So this actions view is by default listed with the campaigns as the groups and it is sorted by priority. So the highest priority tasks for each campaign will show at the very top. And as you work down, those are lower and lower priorities. So when you create a new piece of content, a new idea, a new, um, a new article perhaps that you're working on, it's not going to automatically create an action in the actions database because we want to keep these things distinct. So if I, if I had a new idea for an article, let's say it was the origins of web three, and I wanted to write an article about that at some point, I can just give it a due date way ahead in the future. It's not so important. It doesn't need an action directly linked to it. So this is where our kind of brainstorming and content library um, can be separated from our actual actions that need to be done. When I head to the actions database, I really just want to see the things that need to get done now. So how can I kind of figure that out? How can I figure out what the priorities are? Let's return again to our videos database. When I just scan this, I can see kind of what's already going on. I can see that this video is in filming. This one is being written and scoped out. So perhaps I want to create an action to start filming this day in the life. If I hit this, it's already linked in there. So if I wanted to do that directly from here, I could, um, I could search for that action or I could just directly create a page. This start filming um, action, it's part of the actions database. If I give it a priority, let's say it's high priority, status has not started, area is going to be perhaps content. When I return to the actions view, the tell our story campaign now has an action that needs to get done and it is high priority as we've said it. Tip number four is to clearly store and make our previous and repeat assets accessible. In this setup, we have an assets database and these are going to be things that we use often such as video thumbnails, maybe an Instagram templates, um, any artwork that you want to have access to. This is our landmark artwork. So the, the main takeaway here is that any of these files or assets that you are going to repetitively use, it helps to have a clear database that you can access, that you can filter through. So these have some tags attached to them, thumbnail, design, website, video. And also, you know, some, it doesn't need to just be design files. It can be scripts or uh, repeat messaging phrases, things like this that we want to uh, deploy over and over again. So our assets database, tip number four, make sure that it is very easy to access and make sure that we are regularly updating it with the assets that we use most often. And our final content creation tip is to sketch out and store some of our most common content creation workflows. So this might take the form of a checklist. Let's say that every time I want to set about creating a new video, 
there might be a checklist of things that need to get done, which I can cross off as I work through them. Once again, I could, I could apply the same type of workflow approach to something like an SEO checklist. Every time I publish a new article, I might refer to this on-page SEO checklist. This is an empty-ish database that you can fill with your own processes and workflows. Things that are, they can be as idiosyncratic and personal uh, to you and your particular workflows, but it can help to simply keep them stored in a wiki or in a database like this. Have a few checklists that you can kind of return to very quickly. You've just created some raw footage, you're getting ready to publish a new video, having this kind of new video creation workflow and checklist set out and uh, easy to access means that I don't need to rethink about what are the main areas for every video. I can just return to the checklist, go through it piece by piece and make sure that I'm hitting all of the main points that I want to. And as a bonus tip, if you're using the content OS, the home dashboard also acts as a bit of an aid for prioritizing our actions. So the dive back in section is going to show only those pieces of content that are actively being written, being filmed, or are, prepared, are being prepared for publish. So these are the most active and high priority pieces of content. They're gonna show directly in your home dashboard along with our top priority tasks. So this is only going to show high priority tasks so that at a quick glance, you can take a look at what are your top three or five tasks that just need to get done. So whether you're just trying to get a little bit more organized or if you're looking for ways to hold yourself accountable as a content creator, we hope you found these tips useful. If you'd like to check out the content OS, you can follow one of the links in the description below.